Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Today I want to show off an incredibly powerful prismatic warlock build that focuses on fast speed regeneration no matter where you are. It's a unique build that can be flexible in whatever content you have in mind and it's so easy to use that I would recommend new light players to give this build a try the moment they unlock the prismatic form as it's just that crazy good. Now it will involve the usage of Nezrak's helm and a void weapon if you're choosing but to be honest the blueprint of the build is already there for players to explore. So enough yapping, let's start with the exotic and general aim of the build. Starting with the general aim and the exotic of the build, our aim is to make sure our prismatic and super energy is kept constantly filled up via the high usage of fragments and exotic in play. How this is done is entirely down to the user, but it will require being aggressive in play. For this, we will be using Nezrak's Helm and Graviton Lance. To start with Nezarak's Helm, with his exotic effect Abyssal Extractor, Avoid Damage kills increase the ability energy recharge rate. Now you may think you have to use Void based abilities to activate the exotic, but actually, any Void weapon can help you activate it instead. You will get a 200% to 300% ability regen for all of your abilities over a 2.5 second timer, which is not a lot to work with. But of course, pairing this with something like Graviton Lance is where the build will garner its ability energy so much more faster. Our second exotic is the Graviton Lance, with its exotic effect, Black Hole, which states, A second shot of a burst rips a hole through space-time, doing high damage and recoil with no falloff. Now while the pulse is great for singular damage against minor to majors, it's actually a secondary perk, Cosmology, to where the weapon excels the most in for the build. The additional Void Projectiles it produces will help Nezrak's Abyssal Extractor perk to work more often, as this does count for kills it makes. This overall means, as long as you trigger the perk accordingly, your abilities will rapidly refill without you even needing to fire a second shot, which should be great. For Aspects and Fragments, we have the following. Feed the Void, where defeating targets with any ability kill will activate Devour. Helion, where activating your class ability will produce a solo mortar, that will lob flaming projectiles at a distant target and scorch them. A facet of sacrifice, where while you have arc, solar, or void buff, ability thunder blows will grant bonus darkness transcendent energy. A facet of hope, where having elemental buff will regenerate your class ability over time. A facet of bravery, where defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds to void weapons. Defeating targets with power melee blows grants unraveling rounds to strand weapons. A facet of balance where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy, rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy, and facet of dominance where you avoid grenade weakened targets and your art grenade jolt targets. The following selection will help balance out our key ability regeneration over time by playing that part within the build and the survival of the user. While we could aim for more prismatic effects to occur since ability energy via Nezrax is already quite good, there will be instances where we need that rapid cooldown there and then and we'll need to stack with Nezrak as soon as possible. A faster of hope and balance will play that part efficiently with the cooldown of the build and it's recommended you keep these two with how powerful they will become. A faster of bravery and dominance will increase the potential threat our weapons would do over time, especially our grenades when paired with solo super. And lastly, faster of sacrifice is needed so it can help with garnering darkness energy simply because within this area itself is one of the key weakest areas to grow in the build. Hopefully you follow the same things I have, as this will make Nezrak's helm a lot more flexible over time and how you decide to build the build. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority, with recovery and strength also playing a part. You don't need to worry about having max stats for recovery, discipline and strength, like commonly shown, as long as you have certain mods available, and also activate Nezrak's sin as much as possible. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devour will be enough to increase the potential of the user. You can add a Harmonic or Elemental Resistance mod to help against elemental damage you may face, but that should be the only thing needed. The Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenade. Either Storm or Vortex is both fine to have here, with Storm having the lowest cooldown available. However, this will mean faster bravery will be out of use. The Vortex has a higher cooldown to it, but you can at least reduce this further as long as you use your exotic and devour as often as possible. 
Mod-wise, having the following for support of the build is also enticing and recommended. Having impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Momentum transfer times 2 for a 17% melee buff. Outreach for a 12% melee buff. And distribution for a 6% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we have the following. Avoid Siphon for create orbs of power via void weapons. Charged up times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stack we carry. Void weapon surge times 2 for a 17% void weapon buff. Ashes the assets for a super energy regen via grenades. And lastly, heavy finder, reserves, and scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are using. As we have covered our Zodic Prime weapon, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits toward the build. The secondary, I have the cool with a Warper weapon and slice. This sidearm can be easily gotten by farming it, getting the red borders for it, or better off, just get lucky with your drops. Just like in Dead Kindness, the following is great to use against majors and mini bosses alike with the damage it provides, while at the same time being very useful for slowly building up our darkness transcendent energy to full. Now, having either a strand or stasis weapon is highly recommended just to help with getting prismatic form much faster, as like I mentioned, Darkness is the hardest part to build up within the build, although if you use what currently shown, it shouldn't be the case. Heavy, we have the Apex Predator with Vorpal and Reconstruction. Quite honestly, your Heavy can be anything you like here, as it doesn't need to synergize with the build at all. For me, this rocket is great for taking out mini bosses and bosses solo, and that's completely fine for what I'm going for. Now just when you thought Prismatic couldn't get any better, you get the following which is a nice and easy to adopt build that anyone and everyone can use. It doesn't require anything endgame wise to truly master it, and although the weapons being used are advisable, you can pick whatever you like as long as the main primary is a void weapon. On top of that, the constant cooldown of ability per kill is being made, and then this activating key additional ability regen just from using your grenade or melee allows the build to excel in content where you need that right type of energy to keep it going. Something like GMs, seasonal activities, PvP to comp, you name it and the build will excel in that area for you. Of course the build is best used in PvE because how much best suited to the environment it is already in. On using this build, it will allow you to have fast super energy via your super you have chosen. Much faster prismatic energy when compared to other builds like it. And additionally, much faster ability energy that can be increased further if the user wants to do so, such as using Traveler's Chosen. And there's honestly not much more that compares to this build, unless we start looking at the exotic class items and their unique traits, but that's a build for another day. Overall, I can't see much of a downside of the build, as the build is designed around gathering ability energy via killed made by you. Perhaps most people might be tired of seeing these sorts of builds so often, but for those who are after a more simplified approach for build crafting, then this build is a great place to start with. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pin section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more additional content. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.